Belmer, and good morning, everyone. Um, privileged to uh, to be here with you. I thought I'd start by saying that, um, unlike Dan, I haven't got a long track record of going to uh, to many cops. It's a recent uh, activity set for me. And I reflect on um, the thing that stood out for me at Copenhagen was the length of the line to get in. <laughs> and whilst I understand that, that reflected the intense interest of all of the, uh, the parties, I also reflect, as Dan does, that uh, it, it may not have created the best space to work in. So, so here is one thing that is incontrovertibly true. I got into COP15 faster than the former Vice President Al Gore did. So he stood in line longer than me. I only took 12 minutes. For those of you who are interested in how you can be both effective and lucky, you can have a chat with me later. Um, on, 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 on another issue that Dan raised, which is the science issue, uh, I'm where you are, that it's not really an issue, except that it is. So my feeling is this, we collectively need to do something to respond to this. Uh, so uh, exactly what that looks like, I think, to be determined. Anyway, if I look back at, uh, at the COP, I, it's clear, isn't it, that everybody had uh, enormous expectations set by a wide range of things. They were too high, and they, I think they were always unrealistic. Um, I think that, in fact, we lost sight of the fact that this has been a long-running conversation, and it's going to be a long-running conversation uh, in one way or another for decades to come. But more than 8,000 government representatives were there, and although we may have wished for a different process, in the end, heads of state met, and we did get what we now call the, uh, the Copenhagen Accord. And I think that if you then reset your expectations from a slightly different point of view, the outcome of the meeting begins to look a little bit better. Bottom line is that a lot of people, and that's 80% of the emissions and 80% of the folk, made an agreement. Uh, and I agree that there are lots of issues to be resolved in that. But they made an agreement, and they did set that in an overarching medium to long-term context, which I interpret uh, as, uh, from a European perspective, the two degrees is 450 ppm CO2 equivalent, and that helps me to understand where we need to get to. Uh, I also think that the um, work done on Red Plus was particularly significant and important, and that's a key abatement option over the next decade or so. Also, the discussions around the Green Climate Fund and the Clean Technology Mechanism. And a first attempt in the context of an accord which was effectively about pragmatic action amongst those who can act to also begin to address the matter of equity through the creation of the new funding of 30 billion and the 100 billion per annum by 2020 for mitigation and ad adaptation. Albeit that I also understand that whilst these are positive when taken together, there are lots of details that clearly need to be sorted out. But I think the meeting was a necessary step in what is a long and complex process. So there was a need to reset some of what we were doing. I think we were all disappointed there was no legally binding agreement. And what emerged is that there are individual countries and various regional groupings, including the key influence of the basic countries, are stepping up their activities around climate change, both together, but in different ways. We would imagine that over time, those actions will lead to the creation of a robust carbon market, because we think that's an essential progression for the global response. We need properly functioning markets with a credible carbon price, because industry has to undertake long-term financial planning and make the necessary investments. And again, as Dan has said, it is clear that it is for government and society to set those medium to long-term targets, but none of them can be realized without business as the actor to deliver. Copenhagen didn't deal with the KP in any other way than allowing it to persist. Our take on that is that although the KP has many strengths, the reality is that without the USA and key developing country actions, it actually isn't a sustainable approach, so it needs reset somehow. My sense is that we're seeing a shift in government policy making towards something that is less visionary, but perhaps more pragmatic, practical, and actionable. 
and governments are doing real things that they can do right now, and that would reflect where we would like to be as an enterprise. Could the process be better? Absolutely. Do we need a legally binding agreement? Definitely. These things need to come, and they will come, but it's clear that reaching that point will take time and that there's stuff to do in the meantime. So where does that leave Shell as a company? Well, in many respects, things post-Copenhagen actually don't look a great deal different from the way they did pre-Copenhagen. We will continue to focus on making fossil fuels an effective part of the solution through the CO2 capture and storage program. We're going to grow our gas business because we think that that's a key part of the story. We're going to boost our energy efficiency, and we are going to increase our biofuels activities. And these are real, on the ground, major CO2 projects which we are developing and implementing today. So why hasn't that position changed substantially? This isn't a reflection on what came out of the meeting, but rather that the demands placed on our business by customers and society as a whole are fundamentally unchanged. There is a growing need for more energy, and we need to supply it in a way that increasingly requires low-carbon solutions like biofuels or by using new technology like CCS. And we think that in the bridge from where we are to a more sustainable future, there's a key role for more abundant supplies of natural gas. From a policy perspective, we favour a joined-up global approach. Of course we do, but we understand that it is more likely that there will be regional variances for the next period. So if that's not the current reality, we will continue to advocate for greater cooperation and coordination. As with many other companies, we believe that market-based solutions will be the key to deliver the changes needed. And again, to emphasise that point, that the public sector will create the policy framework, but the private sector will be responsible for delivering the changes needed. And in order to succeed, we need a market to work in. So for me, if I look back at Copenhagen and I ask, the, is the glass half full or half empty? Well, I'm going to go for it's half full. There are a lot of foundations that have been built and we need to work hard. And over the coming months and years, we'll see a great deal of regulatory activity. And whilst we clearly favour market-based instruments, we also understand that a good deal of that may be in other places. Industry should not sit on its hands and it definitively shouldn't wait for the dream policy framework to emerge. We need to get on with the job in hand. The road ahead will not run smoothly. There are many concerns, and we've heard some of those articulated today, not just from industry, which has ever wants to have certainty in the regulatory framework, but also from governments. Issues such as verification of emissions cut, the social and economic equity of the CO2 emissions reductions that need to be delivered and so on. All this is still work that needs to be taken. So my conclusion is that industry needs to maintain an intense dialogue with government. Tackling climate change requires that very strong partnership between public and private sector. Our role as experts in the supply of energy is fundamental, but regulation and changes in society's behaviour are all essential elements of how together we respond to climate change. So we press on with a pragmatic approach, a cooperative and collaborative approach. There will be lots more meetings like Copenhagen, there will probably be a lot of media hype, but we must all continue to work together to make the progress that has to be made with a focus on pragmatic and practical action now.